everybody and welcome back to this week's video. For those of you that are new here, my name is Jordan and I'm a first year medical student at the University of Lincoln and today I'm going to be talking to you about the UCAT and giving you an overview of what it actually is. Before I jump into the video, just remember if you are enjoying it, please hit a like because it really helps this video actually get to the people that need it. <laughs> what does the UCAT actually even stand for? It stands for the University Clinical Aptitude Test and is a requirement for a lot of medical schools. The full list can actually be found on UCAT's own website and I will put a link to that in the description below if you are interested in having a look. Before we jump into what is in the UCAT, it's definitely worth talking about the key dates. So you can start to register from the beginning of June. If you are watching this video when it comes out and you haven't registered yet and you need to sit it because you are hoping to join medical school in September of 2022, register. After this video, go on to UCAT's website, say link will be in the description and get registered for the test. You can start to book your test from the 28th of June and I believe the first test date for this year is the 26th of July. So if you haven't registered yet and you only just realised that you need to sit the UCAT and you're here because you're trying to find out what it actually is, that's fine, you have a month to prepare. On the note of preparing, you may find that a lot of people say you can't really, you can't prepare, it's an aptitude test. Yeah, you can, you can 100% prepare for this test and I will be talking about that a little bit later on in the video. But moving on with the key dates, let's say you are now watching this video and it's September, you've just gone back to sixth form and you haven't registered yet, you can still register. The last date that you can book a test is the 28th of September and the final test date is the 29th of September. So now you know that you can sit a test from the end of July to the end of September. When is the best time to sit this test? If you are currently in year 12 moving into year 13, a lot of people, including myself, would recommend that you sit the test over summer. That way when you go back to sixth form, you already have your UCAT result, you don't have to worry about it anymore, and then you can focus more on your personal statement and your A-levels without that extra stress, because sixth form is stressful. The other good thing about sitting the UCAT in the summer is that you have your results and you can tailor your choices, your choice of medical school to your results. If you do way better than you expected, you can apply to medical schools that have a large emphasis on the UCAT. If you don't do as well as you hoped, apply to medical schools that really don't care about the UCAT that much. Obviously they all do care about it, but varying amounts. <laughs> Because another important thing when we are talking about tailoring your choices is that different universities will have different cutoffs. For example, here at Lincoln, if you get a band four in the situational judgment component of the UCAT, you are automatically not considered for interview. So if you happen to get a band four, don't apply to Lincoln or Nottingham. So I've spoken about the key dates and I've spoken about when it's probably best to sit your test depending on your circumstances. But what actually is even in the test? You've heard me talk about this situational judgment test now and that it is greater than a band, but what else is there? So there are five components of this test. The first four are scored between 300 and 900 and they are abstract reasoning, which is patterns kind of thing outside the box and matching patterns on weird shapes and finding links between them. There's verbal reasoning, which is kind of more the English side of it quantitative reasoning which is your math it's not really hard math it can just be very time pressured and decision making which is a lot more about following a logical path and a logical kind of way of thinking and the final component which is graded on bands is the situational judgment test and this will be kind of giving you scenarios that you may face in your medical career or even at university going through medical school and giving you a variety of options of how to react or what steps to follow following an event and you are assessed based on how well you respond to them. So I've spoken about the components and I've spoken about how you are graded or scored but what do these scores actually even mean? So you can achieve a maximum of 3,600 and you can achieve a minimum of 1,200. Now these are just numbers at the moment let's give them a little bit more context. In 2020, the average score of everyone sitting in the UCAP was 2,511 and the top 20% of candidates scored 2,730 or higher. So that should give you almost a range of where you would expect to be if you're scoring really well in the UCAP or if you're scoring not as well in the UCAP. 
Obviously these averages change year on year, that was just the most recent year, obviously because 2021 sitting hasn't actually happened yet. So that's how you're scored, that are the sort of averages you can expect. Now how would you do better in the UCAT? You can prepare, 100%, just like any other test, you can prepare for the UCAT. And when you're out there looking, you may see a lot of paid resources. And I just want to say that you don't have to pay for resources to be able to do well in the UCAT. I remember when I was sitting my exam, I saw lots of great things about Medify. I don't want to bad talk Medify at all. I know loads of people that used it and absolutely swear by it. But personally for me, I wasn't really in a position to be paying for extra resources and I didn't. And I, I got in the top decile for my year, which I was absolutely over the moon about. And all I used was the UCAT's website where they have practice papers and YouTube videos. Me personally, I use Karma Medic, absolutely amazing. I do recommend giving them a check. Honestly, if you're watching me, you've probably heard of Karma Medic anyway. So now I've just spoken a little bit about those free resources. I actually want to say that I myself am going to be doing a series talking about the UCAT as well as other parts of the medical school to help as many people get into medical school as possible because not everyone is in a position where their school sends people off to med school every single year and their teachers may not be as well equipped to assist them in their application. So what does this mean? If you are applying to medical school and you don't know a lot about the application process or you just want some more resources hit subscribe hit the notification bell so you know when I upload because I will be putting out videos on how to apply to medical school over this summer and again if you have any questions please comment them down below or message me on Instagram my Instagram will be one of the comments there as well or join a community discord server because we have one of those now where I'll be hoping to answer your questions and get a lot more feedback from you guys really with that remember if you did enjoy the video hit a like because it does help get this video out to more people and with that thank you all so much for watching i hope you have a wonderful week and i'll see you in the next one goodbye